Welcome to another episode of Lessons I Learned the Hard Way So You Don't Have to Courtesy Life Skinny Pig, yours truly. And in this episode, we're actually going to talk about pigs. Not guinea pigs per se, but more the descendants of the ancestral wild boar type pig. This particular lesson was one I learned not just the hard way, but also the long way as I gradually grew in my understanding. I've only recently committed to learning it with uncompromising dedication. Now we're going to start by laying a foundation that we can build on. So if you were a kid with a healthy appetite for nursery rhymes and stories, this might be familiar to you. Do you remember the story about the three little pigs? In case your memory is a little fuzzy or if you had a childhood devoid of animal parables, here's a quick recap. Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs but not enough food to feed them. So when they were old enough, she sent them out into the world to go and seek their fortunes. The first little pig was lazy. He built his house out of straw. The second little pig worked a little harder, but he was somewhat lazy too. He built his house out of sticks. The third little pig worked hard all day, and he built his house out of bricks. It was a sturdy house that could withstand the strongest of winds. The next day, a wolf happened to pass their homes and all he could smell within them were the potential pork chops. He decided to blow the houses down with all of his huffing and his puffing, but he only succeeded in doing so for the first two houses made out of straw and sticks. Much to his annoyance, the first and second pig were able to escape into the house of the third pig made out of bricks and not one bit of his huffing or puffing could blow that house down. But he saw another entry, the chimney. And these pigs, well, they saw an opportunity. So the third little pig built a fire, placed a massive pot of water to boil and by the time the wolf came down, guess who became dinner instead? Random fact, pigs are omnivores, so they do eat both plants and animals. But let's not get sidetracked. The point is, the three little pigs learned a valuable lesson. The quality of the materials that you use to build your home is equally, if not more important than the building of the home itself. If you aren't willing to do what it takes to build your home, your life, your dreams, your business with bricks, then when the unpredictable wolf storms of life come knocking, if they're even that polite, destruction is guaranteed and you will be forced to start all over, assuming you even survive. But let's assume we know this. Let's assume we've heard this story since we were little kids and it's been stuck in the back of our minds. We know that whatever we want to build in this life, we need to build it strong, build it true, build it right. We know. As a storyteller, I want to carry you into my fan fiction continuation of the three little pigs in their world a few hundred years later. Music, please. And so are the story of the three little pigs passed down from generation to generation until bricks became the only acceptable life building code in that world. Let's now enter this world. And it is one where the houses are indeed built with bricks. Yet we find here that some houses are lavish mansions, some are smaller but cozy, and some are still under construction. Some are, well, not even houses at all, but empty lots of land with not even a single brick in sight. This is a little strange to see because as it turns out in our investigation of this world, each pig or person is given land to build a home and the same number of bricks each day to build them, regulated by the Brick Production World Corp. To understand this world, let's take a closer look at three different scenarios. One, the cozy finished homes. Two, the strange empty lots. And three, those lavish mansions. We walk up to a cozy home and we survey its brick walls and the house itself. One wall looks like a wall of dreams. And it is clear that the owner invested quite a number of bricks into her dreams and aspirations. Another wall we observe is one of health. Quite a substantial brick investment here. And it is a load-bearing wall. 
Without it being structurally sound, the entire house could fall down. Some walls are for business, some are for connections. There's even a brick splash wall of memories representing risks that the owner felt she should take and those gave her great rewards and lots of joy. It is clear that whoever this piggy is, she did really well at building a beauty of a home and she wisely invested all of her bricks. Let's move on to our two remaining scenarios. We want to understand why some lots are empty and why those others have big mansions on them. We move on to the empty lots. Every morning, a brick delivery arrives on each lot and the same number of bricks appears. We're not gonna take any chances. We count 24. So why then are there any empty lots? Even if the owners decided not to build right away, shouldn't there be a stockpile of bricks left for when they were actually ready to begin? This doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, not until we read the fine print on the Brick Production World Corp Agreement. Hold. Bricks that aren't used on the day they are given will be recalled by the corporation at the end of every day. Ah, so we finally understand what's happening. Anyone who isn't willing to build on a particular day isn't allowed to stockpile for any other day either. This explains our empty lots. Still, our final third mystery remains. The mansions. We journey to a couple of mansions, one older and slowly growing and the other rapidly expanding and under construction. We observe the first and it isn't the biggest mansion per se, but it is growing substantially in size. We quickly deduce that this piggy has spent every single day of her life diligently using every single one of those 24 bricks, so kudos to her. It's the second mansion that's rapidly expanding that catches our real attention. How is this taking place? Let's launch our surveillance. The day begins, the brick delivery appears on time, it's only 24 bricks. But then, something else happens. Coming from all over, we see people hoisting bricks to the mansion under construction. They are bringing bricks from their lots. But who are they? Some of these people have built their homes and they're content with the size and makeup they don't seem to mind. They are, after all, getting freshly cooked meals and even some leisure time in the pool in exchange for their daily bricks. Others only used a portion of their 24 bricks for their homes and then they brought the rest here. They felt tired from half a day's work and they figured they were getting freshly cooked meals and like soup and bread after all for the remainder of their bricks, so why not? But then there were those who didn't have homes for themselves. They were from the empty lots. Some didn't seem to care that they had nowhere to live, no assets they owned, their health was not in check and their dreams weren't realized. They cared only for the readily available soup and bread and seemed content to return to their empty lots at night and sleep under the stars. Some didn't know how to begin to build a home or how to even decide what kind of walls they should build into it, whether dreams or health or business or connections and love. They simply didn't know. For them, it made sense to just focus on exchanging their bricks for enough sustenance to get through a given day and then wake up the next day and do it all over again. But they forgot the wolves were still at large. The original wolf from the Three Little Pig story had also spread a different version of that story to generations and generations of wolves that followed. Even in this new world order, the wolf's lesson was simple. Houses built with bricks, not so penetrable. So instead, target pigs without the knowledge, discipline, or desire to have homes of their own, those who were the most exposed. And so those piggies were always at risk, always at a disadvantage to the rest. As the secure and wealthier pigs did better and better, those pigs were stuck in a vicious cycle, puppets strung in a dangerous dance with the wolves of life. 
This, my friends, is not just the world we live in today, but one I found myself stuck in for quite some time. I spent some years of my life not wisely investing the bricks that I was given each day. Most times, I carried those bricks to other lots to help build other things and neglected the home that I needed to build. This sometimes took the form of unfulfilling jobs or tasks, not taking care of my vessel, my body, my health, or even putting off my dreams while taking on others' desires and their dreams on their behalf. You name it. But the proverbial wolf is always, always at large. This wolf can come in the form of everything from pandemics to natural disasters and even to man-made catastrophes. But it can also take the form of sickness due to bad health practices, job losses that crash our lives because we never built anything for ourselves and instead assumed that these companies would be around forever. And it can even take the form of broken relationships and connections, friendships because we never took the time to get clear on the desired design and then build it. Some wolves won't be within our control and others will. A personal example of that. As an entrepreneur with a company that offers creative services and builds creative products, I had a tough choice to make. See, creative services can help others build the products that they desire, but here's the hard truth. Unless you've secured the intellectual property behind the processes and concepts that you use, or you have a stake in what is then built using your services, you are essentially giving your bricks away to build someone else's house. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you've gotten very clear on the home you want to build for yourself and you're doing what it takes to build that. I believe it is our duty as humans to look out for each other and help each other grow. But here's when it's not such a good thing. When you delay or put off building products that you can either partially or wholly own, or you neglect investing bricks into your vessel while giving all of your bricks away each day, yeah, that's how not to do it. Remember, these bricks aren't just about services or business or things that we might do for others. We are the physical vessels through which all of our ideas and visions must pass. So the quality of our vessels makes a huge contribution to the quality of our offerings. When we neglect to invest some of our bricks into our health, rest, relaxation, we are essentially compromising every single load-bearing wall in our homes. If it isn't obvious already, these bricks are the hours of each day. You can break them down to seconds or moments, or you can view them as larger chunks of time. But what matters, what really, really matters, is that you ensure you are always building your home, even if you're helping others to build theirs. As to how I got clear on the ways in which I should invest my bricks, the next video will be all about finding that clarity. So do subscribe and click that bell so you'll be the first to know when it drops. Here's my final heads up. This is likely going to be one of those lessons that we will need to keep refreshing to ensure we don't slip. And if we do, to ensure we don't slide back into learning it the hard way all over again. Let's commit to reminding each other about the homes we should be building. And if there's anyone you think might need this, feel free to share it. I'd also love to hear from you. Is this a particular lesson that you've also had to suffer through? Drop me your experiences in the comments below. Thank you for joining me for another lesson I learned the hard way so you don't have to.